Dear audience, I'm Joost Ronemander, a medical student at the Rappaut University Medical Center in Nijmegen, the Netherlands. I would like to thank the International Continent Society for the opportunity to present these results. On behalf of my colleagues, John Hayesakers and Frank Martens, I welcome you to my presentation about vesico-vaginal fistula repair by a vaginal approach. I have nothing to declare. The aim of this study was to determine the outcome of surgically treated vesico-vaginal fistulae using a transvaginal approach with a LOTSCO technique. This is a transvaginal approach with circumferential incision around the vesico-vaginal fistulae with mobilization of two layers of the bladder and vaginal wall. This is an important step to enable tension-free closure. The fistula tract is closed using inverting sutures at the bladder. To confirm successful closure of the fistula tract, methylene blue test is performed. The vaginal wall is closed using everting sutures, square to the underlying suture line at the bladder site. A retrospective chart study was conducted at the Department of Urology, Radboud University Medical Center. Patients who underwent a transvaginal surgical approach to repair vesico-vaginal fistulae from 2014 till September 2020 were included. The primary objective was fistula closure. Secondary objectives were predictive factors for the outcome of the surgical procedure, such as patient characteristics leakage on cystography two weeks post-operative, and surgery time. As shown in Table 1, 13 of the 25 procedures, 52%, had successful transvaginal closure after first attempt. Of the 7 patients who underwent a second transvaginal attempt, 4, or 57%, had successful transvaginal closure. A combination of either one or two attempts results in 68% successful closure of vesico-vaginal fistulae. In this study, not all recurrent fistulae underwent a second attempt in closing the fistula. If patients who did not yet underwent a second attempt were taken into account, with extrapolation of the results of patients who already underwent a second attempt, success rates would go up to 79% of the vesico-vaginal fistulae successfully closed. Only a few complications were observed. Urinary tract infection was the most common complication. Five patients with leakage shown on cystography two weeks after surgery had a catheter in situ for an extended period. Although the catheter remained in situ, all vesicovaginal fistula were persistent. As shown in Table 2, 6 or 46% already underwent a previous attempt in closing the vesicovaginal fistula elsewhere within the group of patients with successful closure. Of the patients in the study with a recurrent fistula, 3 or 25% underwent previous vesicovaginal fistula surgery elsewhere. With few minor complications noted within this cohort, the transvaginal surgical intervention with a LATSCO technique remains a good treatment option for vesicovaginal fistulae. As mentioned earlier, Five patients had a cystography that showed leakage and the catheter remained in situ for an extended period to support healing, however without success. The effect of the catheter remaining in situ for an extended period therefore seems limited. One can even question the added value of cystography after surgery in this respect. This study shows that a second attempt in closing the fistula with a transvaginal approach is useful and a previous transvaginal attempt is not a contraindication for a second transvaginal attempt in closing the vesicovaginal fistula surgically. I would like to thank you for your attention.